Welcome to Great Hymns of the Faith. My name is John Frazier. I'm your host. We're going to begin our program today with a great hymn of praise. And this particular hymn brings back some very pleasant memories to me. You see, while we were ministering and living in Bermuda, we had a visit from the Maryland State Boys Choir. Wow, there was a group of about 70 boys and they put on a concert in our church. Here is one of the pieces that they sang on that evening. Praise his holy name. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. 
Daniel A. D. Marbell, in the year 1887, put pen to paper and composed the words to a piece called When They Ring the Golden Bells. And folks, here is Canadian Dave Randall to sing Daniel Marbell's song. Enjoy it. And we'll only reach that shore by faith's decree One by one we'll gain the portals there to dwell with the immortals When they ring those golden bells for you and me Don't you hear the bells now ringing? Don't you hear the angels singing? Tis the glory, hallelujah, jubilee In that far off sweet forever just beyond the shining sail beyond the silver sea we shall only know the blessing of our father's sweet caressing when they ring those golden bells for you and me don't you hear the bells now ringing don't you hear the angels singing tis the glory hallelujah jubilee in that far off sweet forever just beyond the shining river when they selection. Her dates, 1820 to 1915. And would you believe that during her lifetime, she composed between 6,000 and 8,000 gospel pieces? Of course, I speak of none other than Fanny Crosby. And here's Fanny's gospel selection called, I Am Thine, O Lord. I am thine, O Lord.
There is a scripture passage that tells the reader, look, if you just look at the wide world before you, you will know that there must be, there has to be, there is a creator behind it because these things simply just couldn't happen on their own. Look at the beautiful mountains, the prairies, the forests, the hills. Look at the animals. Look at all the beautiful flowers. Well, folks, that tells us a little bit about our next selection called All Things Bright and Beautiful. The words are by Cecile F. Alexander. Here's another selection that speaks of the beauty of the land and the forests and the fields and the seas before us and the valleys. The words are by Catherine Bates. The year was 1893. It was first published in the 4th of July edition of the church periodical, The Congregationalist, in 1895. And at that time, the poem was titled America. I was born on the 4th of July, 1776, and the Declaration of Independence is my birth certificate. The bloodlines of the world run in my veins because I offered freedom to the oppressed. I am many things and many people. I am the nation. I am 250 million souls and the ghost of millions who have lived and died for me. 
I am Nathan Hale and Paul Revere. I stood at Lexington and fired the shot heard round the world. I am Washington, Jefferson, and Patrick Henry. I am Independence Hall, the Monitor, and the Merriman. I am Lee, Grant, and Abe Lincoln. I remember the Alamo, the Maine, and Pearl Harbor. I am John Kennedy and Martin Luther King. When freedom called, I answered and stayed until it was over, over there. I left heroic dead in Flanders Field, on the rocks of Corregidor, on the bloody hills of Korea, and in the steaming jungles of Vietnam. I was held hostage in Iran. I am the wheat fields of Nebraska and the Black Hills of South Dakota. I am the coal fields of the Virginias and Pennsylvania. I am the Golden Gate and the Grand Canyon. I am forest, field, mountain, and desert. I am the quiet villages and the cities that never sleep. I am the ballot dropped in the box, the roar of the crowds and the voice of a choir in a cathedral. You see the lights of Christmas in me and hear the strains of all Lang Syne as the calendar turns. Yes, I am the nation, and these are the things that I am. I was conceived in freedom, and God willing, in freedom will spend the rest of my days. May I possess always the integrity, the courage, and the strength to keep myself unshackled, to remain a citadel of freedom and a beacon of strength for the rest of the world. This is my wish, my goal, and my prayer. Today, 211 years after my birth, I am the United States of America. was a piece especially meaningful to our American listeners, but we know we have listeners from Canada, England, Scotland, and all points, I think, in between. Now, our next selection is by an English choir. In fact, it's the Wells Cathedral Choir, and the Wells Cathedral is an Anglican cathedral in Wells, Somerset, in England. And here they are to sing a selection called Like a Mighty River.
Edward Hayes Plumtree, 1821-1891, was a noted theologian as well as preacher. He held several appointments throughout the Church of England, but he also found time during his busy schedule to compose hymns. And we're going to feature now one of Plumtree's hymns in called Thy Hand, O God, Has Guided. Words of our next selection are by Ernest W. Blandy. The year was 1890. He was a Salvation Army officer and he wrote this particular piece after going through a time of struggle, trying to choose between a very comfortable post at an established church and an alternate assignment to the New York City waterfront and slum called Hell's Kitchen. Which one, which post do you suppose he accepted? Well, you're right. He chose Hell's Kitchen. The piece is called Where He Leads Me.
I'm afraid that we've come to the end of our programming time for today, folks. I trust that you enjoyed the selections that I was able to share with you. And as always, I would hope uh, that next week you will be able to join us once again for yet more of Great Hymns of the Faith. So until we meet again, God bless. <music>